Hello, my dear students. So, I am going to continue with the extra questions related to hydrostatic pressure. You need 15 of your grade 10 science textbook. So, here extra question 2. What is pressure? What is pressure? You all know the definition of pressure. Pressure is the force exerted over a unit area. So, here the force exerted over a over a unit area that is pressure the force exerted over a unit area write an equation for pressure so if you are to write the equation how do we write pressure is equal to now if you take a diagram if it is a solid like this the weight of the solid will be acting downwards that is the force if it is kept on a surface the pressure exerted over this particular area this is the cross sectional area is what force over area is what we get as pressure so, when you want to write the equation, what do we write? Pressure is equal to, we say the perpendicular force because the weight, the force is acting perpendicular to the surface. So, here we can say perpendicular force. Perpendicular force divided by the surface area. You can also just write it as force over area. But if you are to write the full equation, perpendicular force divided by surface area. So from this, the next one, write the factors that affect pressure. So since it re it's related to the equation given here, pressure equals perpendicular force over surface area. What are the factors that affect pressure? So, here it is the perpendicular force. When the perpendicular force increases, pressure will increase. If the surface area increases, pressure will decrease. So, the factors that affect pressure are perpendicular force and surface area. Or you can simply write it as force and surface area also. I will say perpendicular force. Perpendicular force. force and surface area. So, those are the factors. I am sure students you would have written all these answers correctly. What is pressure? The force exerted over a unit area and the equation for pressure perpendicular force divided by surface area and the factors that affect pressure perpendicular force and surface area. Then I will move on to the next question. So, as you all always do, you all look at the question, answer the question first and then you can confirm your answers with my discussion. Part 4, Pascal and Newtons per meter square are two units used to measure pressure. Write a relationship between the two units. So, you are familiar with these students, how we derive the two units. Now, if there is again an object on a surface, the force that is exerted downwards perpendicular force is F and this area if it is A. From the equation you all know pressure is equal to force over area. So force is given the unit newtons and area is given the unit meter square. So from that we get the unit for pressure as newton meter minus 2. But that unit is equal to the standard unit of pressure that is Pascal. Newton meter minus 2 is equal to Pascal. So here Pascal and Newtons per meter square are two units used to measure pressure. Write a relationship between the two units. That is the relationship. So if I write it again, Newton my meter minus 2 is equal to Pascal. 
this is the relationship and this is how we get that relationship. So as the answer if you write only this one that is enough because they have asked you to write the relationship only and this is how we get that relationship. Then the next part next question. The pressure exerted by a 50 kilogram bag of cement on the flow is 1500 Pascal. So there is a 50 kilogram cement bag. And the pressure exerted is equal to 1500 Pascal. Calculate the surface area of the bag in contact with the flow. So here they want you to calculate this surface area. They have given you the gravitational acceleration g equals 10 meters per second square. So why do we need the gravitational acceleration? Here you can see 50 kilogram is the mass of the object. So we need to find the weight because weight is the force. Weight is equal to mass into gravity or gravitational acceleration. Gravitational acceleration. So that is equal to 50 kilogram into 10 meters per second square. So that will be 500 Newton. But what is the question? Look at the question. We need to find the surface area. So to find the surface area, we have to use the equation pressure equals force over area. We need to rearrange the equation so you can find the area. Area will be equal to force divided by pressure. So that is how we rearrange the equation. So then what is the force? 500 Newton. What is the pressure? Now it says 1500 Pascal. So 1500 Pascal. 500 over 1500 Pascal, it's going to be 1 over 3. And what will be the unit? When we have the force in Newtons, pressure in Pascals, the area has to be meter squared. So here you will have the unit as meter squared. We can also further simplify this. If it is 1 over 3, when you divide 1 by 3, I will do it on this side. You can simplify it as point, so 3, it will become 0 0.33. We can also write that answer, 0 0.33 meter square. So that is how we find the area. The pressure exerted by a 50 kilogram bag of cement on the flow is 1500 Pascal. Calculate the surface area of the bag in contact with the flow. So since it is the mass that is given, we need to find the weight that will be the force. So that's 500 Newton. And if we use the equation for pressure, pressure equals force over area. So area is calculated by dividing force by pressure. So force is 500 Newton, pressure 1500 Pascal. When you divide, you get the value as 1 over 3 meter squared or 0 0.33 meter square. So that is the answer. I am sure you were able to do this calculation correctly students. So with that I will move on to the next slide. Extra question 3. The figure below shows a YouTube containing water. Now I am sure students you are familiar with these type of questions. We have done a few already. So you can see the YouTube shown here and it contains water in both the arms. The water levels are the same. So here in these students according to the diagram you can see X and Y have been marked. So they actually point to the arms of the YouTube. So in the arm A the point in the arm X the point A has been marked and arm Y point B has been marked. But as you can see in the diagram, both the points are at the 
same level. So since this is related to pressure, I am sure you all can understand that the pressure has at point A and point B are equal and those are exposed to the atmosphere. So that means they are equal to atmospheric pressure. Let's look at the questions. What is the pressure at point A? What is the pressure? Just now I told you all it is the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. The second one. What can you say about the pressure at points A and B? What can you say about the pressures? They are equal. They are equal. They are equal. Pressure at point A and point B. One thing, both are exposed to the atmosphere. So, it is the atmospheric pressure. And also, both of them are at the same level. So, that also shows the pressures are equal. Then the third one. What would happen to the water levels in the arms of the U-tube if an air-filled balloon is attached to arm X? So, if you attach an air-filled balloon. So, here they haven't mentioned whether it's tied or not. But you all know when they say attached. So, that means the air has to be in contact with the water column. So, they are, it's not tied. So, then what will happen? Due to the air that is inside the balloon, the air will exert a pressure at that point A. So, because of that, the water level will go down in arm X and the water level will rise in arm Y. So, that is what you will see when we attach an air-filled balloon to arm X. So, we have to say water level water level goes down in arm X and ri rises up in arm Y. So, the water level goes down in arm X and rises up in arm Y. So, those are the answers to these questions. The pressure at point A is the atmospheric pressure and pressure at point A is equal to point B and also when you attach a balloon the water level will come down in arm X and water level will go up in arm Y. So those are the answers. With that students I will move on to the next slide. Extra question 4. The figure given below shows how air is pumped into a U-tube by an air-filled syringe. So here you can look at the diagram. This is the air-filled syringe. It is attached to this arm of the U-tube and air is pumped through this. So because of that air, there will be a pressure acting on this surface that has been marked as X, point X. So then you can see the water column is a little down here and it is slightly high up there. So then here students you can see from this point to this point if we draw a line it's the same level. So obviously at point X and Y the pressures have to be the same that you know by now. And then here you can see this is point Z marked up there and the height of the column liquid column up to this point is H. And there you know at point Z, what is the pressure acting there? It is the atmospheric pressure. Here it's going to be P atmosphere. ATM, I'll use it for atmosphere like a shortened form. Atmospheric pressure there. So that is the information that you can get from this diagram. Let's look at the questions. What is the pressure at point Z? That is the first question. We have already answered that. The pressure at point Z is atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure. Then, write a suitable relationship for the pressure acting at point Y 
atmospheric pressure is given by P1, gravitational acceleration G and density of water rho. So there, if we try to write the relationship, this is P atmosphere, you can see. So at this point, it has to be the P atmosphere, that is the pressure at this point and the pressure exerted by the water column. So that will be H into density into gravitational acceleration. So that is the relationship you need to write here. Pressure, pressure at point Y is equal to atmospheric pressure pressure plus pressure exerted by the water column which is marked as H. So if we are to write the relationship we will say pressure P at point Y that is equal to P1 that is given as the atmospheric pressure plus pressure exerted by the water column is H is the height of the water column and density of water they have given it as rho and gravitational acceleration G. So that is the equation. This is the relationship. So if you are asked to write the relationship, if you write only this one, that is more than enough. So from here also students, you can see at point Y, the pressure is greater. So the same pressure will be acting at point X as well. So there are also the pressure is more. Earlier also we have discussed similar questions when we attach a balloon, inflated balloon, the pressure exerted by the air is greater than the pressure exerted by the atmospheric air. So or the atmospheric pressure is less than the pressure exerted by the air there. Why the relationship is this? Atmospheric pressure plus the pressure exerted by the water column that is H. So this is the relationship. With that students, we will move on to the next question. Write the relationship between the pressure at point X and Y. At point X and Y, what is the relationship? They are equal. So if we write pressure, pressure at point X, we will take it as Px. And pressure at point Y at point Y P Y. So the relationship is P X equals P Y. You need to write the relationship between the pressure at point X and Y. They are equal. Build up a relationship for the pressure of air in the syringe. Build up a relationship for the pressure of air in the syringe. We have already done that. How? We wrote the relationship for the pressure at point Y. The same pressure acts at point X and that is the pressure exerted by the air inside this part. So we have already written the equation. But again we will write it. Pressure of air in the syringe. Pressure of air in the syringe that is equal to pressure at point x. So pressure at point x is in return equal to px is equal to py. We have already written the equation. So that is equal to we will take this as pressure equals P1 atmospheric pressure plus 
h into rho into g. So we have already written those as answers to the previous questions. So pressure of air in the syringe is equal to Px because at this, this point it is the pressure exerted by the air there. Then Px equals P by and at point P by it is the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure exerted by that column H. So pressure equals P1 plus H rho G. I am sure you understood all these concepts students and you have written the correct answers. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 5. Diagram of a hydraulic press is given below. So, hydraulic press, you all know, is related to transmission of pressure through liquids. So, if we look at the diagram, they have shown the cylinder. But you all know, these are the two arms from the size of the arms, you all know. This is the small arm or small piston and this side is the large arm or the large piston and these are the pistons that are attached there and you know we can exert a force to the small piston and there will be a force acting on the large piston. Why? Because pressure is transmitted through the liquid and also we neglect the pressure exerted by this liquid column. Why? Because that pressure is very small compared to the pressure exerted over the piston by applying the force. You all can remember that. So let's look at the questions. The area of the small piston is 2 meters squared and the area of the large piston is 8 meters squared. So the values are given to us. This is 2 meters squared and this is 8 meter squared. Calculate the pressure exerted by the small piston when a force of 50 Newton is applied on it. So if there is a force of 50 Newton applied onto the small piston, what is the pressure? What is the equation we need to use? The common one pressure equals pressure is equal to force over area. Or if you use the symbols, P equals F over A, force over area. So then pressure is equal to force is 50 Newton, area is 2 meter square. So we will get the answer as 25 Newton meter minus 2 or that is equal to 25 Pascal. Pascal is the standard unit. You can also leave it at Newton meter minus 2 because they haven't mentioned anything about the unit there. So that is the pressure exerted by the small piston when a force of 50 Newton is applied on it. So that pressure of 25 Pascal will be transmitted through this liquid to the large piston that you all know. So we we'll look at the rest of the question students. The area of the small piston is 2 meter squared and the area of the large piston is 8 meter squared. The same information is given again. So you know the diagram. Then B part, calculate the pressure exerted on the large piston when a force of 50 Newton is applied on the small piston. So here what will be the pressure on the large piston? It will be the same pressure. So there are pressure on the large piston is equal to the same value because we already calculated it. You can even calculate it again 50 Newton but we need to use the area here because the 50 Newton is applied onto this. So the area is 2 meter square 2. We already calculated this as 25 Pascal. So pressure on the large piston is also 25 Pascal. What is the force exerted by the large piston in the above instance? So what is the force exerted by the large piston there? The pressure is the same. So pressure equals force over area. 
So pressure into area is force. So we already know the pressure 25 Pascal and here what is the area? This is 8 meter square. So it has to be 8 meter square. That is going to be equal to 25 into 8, 200 Newton. So force is equal to 200 Newton. Is that okay students? So uh, by applying a force of 50 Newton over an area of 2 meters squared, we are able to exert a force of 200 Newton over an area of 8 meter square. Is that clear to you all? I am sure it is. So with that, we will move on to the next question. Extra question 6. Write the name of the machine used to lift one side of a car when a tire needs to be changed. So what is the name of that machine? It is the hydraulic jack. In the previous question, we discussed the concept of hydraulic press. Based on that concept only, the hydraulic jack, hydraulic brake system and also the hydraulic hoist. All of them function based on the concept of hydraulic press. So there it is related to transmission of pressure through liquids. So write the name of the machine used to lift one side of a car when a tire needs to be changed. That is hydraulic jack. Hydraulic jack. Second one. What is the principle used to construct the above machine? So I just mentioned that to you all students. What is the principle? It is the hydraulic press. Hydraulic press. Third one. Write the name of another machine that is constructed to operate based on the principle mentioned above. So another machine that also I mentioned to you all the hydraulic hoist. So then we have the hydraulic hoist. Hydraulic hoist. So write the name of the machine used to lift one side of a car when a tire needs to be changed. That is the hydraulic jack. What is the principle used to construct the above machine? That is hydraulic press. And also write the name of another machine that is constructed to operate based on the principle mentioned above. That is hydraulic hoist. In addition to that, even the hydraulic brake, it uses the same principle of transmission of pressure through liquids. So with that students, we will move on to the next one. Extra question 7. Hydraulic brake system of a vehicle is shown below. Hydraulic brake system of a vehicle is shown below. So in that if we look at the diagram, you can see here students, A is the piston there. Then you can see D, that is the master cylinder. Then here you can see B is the tube that contains the brake oil. And then again here we have E that is the slave cylinder and here you can see what is marked as C are the brake pads and then we have the disc rotor or disc brake or disc barrel that is F. So what happens here? I am sure you are familiar with the hydraulic brake system. So here maybe I can label the parts. So here A is the piston just to label the parts for you all this is the master cylinder then here we have the slave cylinder Sil slave cylinder and here we have the disc brake Then here we have the brake pads and B is the brake fluid. You can call it brake fluid or brake oil as well. So those are the parts. Now let us look at the question. 
briefly explain the function of the hydraulic brake system. So that is what you need to do. What happens here? Now when you press on the brake pedal, that is inside the vehicle. This is a vehicle, let's say a car. So the driver is driving the car whenever you want to brake and stop the vehicle or to reduce the speed of the vehicle, you press on the brake pedal. So there what happens? There is a force exerted onto the brake pedal and that force will be transmitted to the tire there, the wheel. So how does that happen? The force that is exerted by the driver is exerted onto this piston. That is what they have shown the arrow there. So inside the piston that is connected to the master cylinder, there is the brake fluid. So the pressure that is caused due to the force will be transmitted through this brake fluid to the slave cylinder. You can see the master cylinder is small here, the slave cylinder is larger. So what will happen is the force there will be greater. Because of that force, the brake pads will be pushed together. So they will come and touch this disc brake, this particular disc holding the disc in position. Initially the disc will be rotating. With the disc on this side it is the tire of the vehicle that is connected there. So when the disc is rotating the tire is also rotating. The vehicle is moving. But when the brake pads touch the disc brake it is held in place or at least there is a force that prevents the movements or slows down the movement. Because of that, either the wheel will stop moving or the speed will decrease. That is how the hydraulic brake system works. So we need to briefly explain the function of the hydraulic brake system. So there we can say, when the brake is applied by the driver there is a force exerted onto the piston of the master cylinder. This force exerts a pressure that is transmitted through the brake fluid. This pressure exerts a force onto the brake pads then the brake pads are pushed towards the disc brake. Because of this, the disc 
stops moving or we can say slows down so here we will consider an instance where the vehicle is completely stopped you all know the driving process normally by applying the brake you can slow down the vehicle also you can stop the vehicle so here i'll just consider it as stops the disc stops moving and the vehicle stops moving Is that clear to all students? So if we look at the explanation, briefly explain the function of the hydraulic brake system. When the brake is applied by the driver, there is a force exerted onto the piston of the master cylinder. This force exerts a pressure that is transmitted through the brake fluid. This pressure exerts a force onto the brake pads. Then the brake pads are pushed towards the disc brake. Because of this, the disc stops moving, that is slows down and the vehicle stops moving. So that is the brief explanation as to how the hydraulic brake system works. Again, the concept behind hydraulic brake system is the transmission of pressure through liquids. So here also in the diagram, you can see we have the brake fluid. So when a pressure force is exerted there, there is pressure generated that pressure is transmitted through the liquid to the slave cylinder. That is how the hydraulic brake system works. So with that students, we will move on to the next question. Extra question 8. What is the atmospheric pressure at mean sea level? You all know that when we discuss the mercury hydrometer, the height of the mercury column that is equal to 76 centimeters and the pressure of the atmosphere is given by mer mer centimeter mercury. 76 centimeter mercury is the atmospheric pressure at mean sea level. Why do we need to mention this mean sea level? Because when the altitude increases, when you go to a higher elevation, the pressure decreases. So the atmospheric pressure drops with increase in elevation. That is why we consider the pressure at mean sea level. So what is the atmospheric pressure at mean sea level? It is 76 centimeter mercury. We have to mention that as well. We need to say what liquid that is. So normally centimeter mercury is the unit. What happens to the atmospheric pressure as the height of atmosphere increases? The atmospheric pressure decreases. So, we can just say decreases. You can write a short answer like this or you can write it as a sentence and say the atmospheric pressure decreases as the height of the atmosphere increases. So, the main thing is the atmospheric pressure has to decrease. Where is the atmospheric pressure high? Colombo or Nuarelia? Now, Colombo compared to Nuarelia has a lower elevation. Nuarelia has a higher elevation or the height is more. So that means the pressure at Nuarelia will be less compared to the pressure that is the pressure of atmosphere in Colombo. So where is the atmospheric pressure high Colombo or Nuarelia? It's in Colombo. What would be the atmospheric pressure at the top of Mount Everest? What is the pressure? The height is very, very high. So it is a very high elevation. The pressure drops drastically. It's about 25 centimeter mercury. Now that is 76 centimeter mercury at mean sea level. 25 centimeter mercury means almost like a little bit more than one third of the pressure at mean sea level. So it will be 25 centimeter Mercury. What is the name of the instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure using mercury? We call it the mercury barometer. Mercury barometer.
Then the last one. What is the name of the instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure without using liquids? What is the instrument? Aneroid barometer. Aneroid barometer. Aneroid barometer does not use any liquid. It is a mechanical device based on the shape of the a tube that has vacuum inside it, the pressure is read using the indicator. You all can remember that aneroid barometer. So, I am sure you all were able to answer all these questions correctly, students. Atmospheric pressure at mean sea level is 76 centimeter mercury and it decreases with the increase in height of the atmosphere. And in Colombo, the atmospheric pressure is comparatively higher compared to the atmospheric pressure in Noralia. The reason is the Noralia is at a higher elevation than Kalam. Then what would be the atmospheric pressure at the top of Mount Everest? It's going to be around 25 centimeter mercury. And what is the name of the instrument? It is the mercury barometer. And the instrument that does not use liquids is the aneroid barometer. So I'm sure students, you were able to answer all these questions correctly. With that, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 9. Explain how we use a straw to drink water. So, how is that possible? It is an application of atmospheric pressure. So, here the diagram is shown to you. Now, these arrows indicate the atmospheric pressure. P A T M for atmosphere. So, that is the pressure. Now, what happens here? When you put the straw into water, we will say this liquid, it says water. So, into water, normally there is air inside the straw. So, there is atmospheric pressure. But when we suck from the straw, what do we do there? We draw the air into our mouth. So, because of that, the amount of air inside the straw decreases. So, therefore, the pressure inside the straw decreases. But at the same time, there is atmospheric pressure pushing the liquid down. So, there is more pressure here. There is less pressure inside the straw. So, because of that pressure difference, the water is pushed into the straw. So, that is how atmospheric pressure helps us to drink water from the straw. So, that is what we need to explain here. When we suck the straw. Air inside it is drawn into the mouth. Then the pressure of air inside the straw is less than the less than the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure pressure pushes pushes the water through the the straw into the mouth so that is what happens there when we suck the 
straw air inside it is drawn into the mouth. Then the pressure of the air inside the straw is less than the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure pushes the water through the straw into the mouth. So that is how we use atmospheric pressure to drink water. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 10. Atmospheric pressure at mean sea level is 76 centimeter mercury. Density of mercury is 13,600 kilogram per meter cube and gravitational acceleration is 10 meters per second square. Calculate the atmospheric pressure in Pascals. You are familiar with this calculation. We have done this before also. Pressure equals H rho G. So H is given to you 76. But what do we need to do? We need to convert the unit. We need to divide it by 100. So that we get the unit in meters. 76 divided by 100 into 13,600 kilogram meter minus 3 kilogram meter minus 3 into gravitational acceleration 10 meters per second square. So when we simplify this you will need to multiply 76 by 1360. So if I do that calculation. Multiply 1360 by 76, 0, 36, 18 and 3, 21, 2, 6 and 2. Then 0, 0, 42, 4, 21. Right. Nine. So when we add these together, 103,360, 103,360. So the answer is going to be 103,360 Pascal. You can also write it as 1.03. 360 into 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. Either way is fine. 103,360 Pascal or 1.0336 into 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. That is the atmospheric pressure in Pascal that is equal to 76 centimeter mercury. Then the next one. Calculate the height of the water column that is required to exert the above pressure. So height of the water column that is required to exert the above pressure. Uh, we have done a similar calculation before this as well. So here what do we do? Again we use the same equation P equals H rho G. But only thing is we already know the pressure 103,360. Pascal, we don't know the height, but we know the density. What is the density of water? It's 1000 kilogram per meter cube and gravitational acceleration 10 meters per second square. So here, if you are to simplify it and find it, easily we can cancel the zeros. So H is equal to 103. 36, 10,336 divided by 1000 is equal to H. So H is equal to 10.336 meters. 10.336 meters. That is the answer. So you all can remember students early also we discussed. We need only 76 centimeters of mercury column. So if you have a glass tube of about 1 meter length, it's more than enough to make the mercury barometer. But if you use water instead of mercury, now water 
is easily available, it's available to us, readily available to us and it is easy to handle. But still, if you look at the height, we need a tube that is longer than, taller than 10 meters in height. So that is very difficult to handle. So because of that only, we don't use water. Instead, we use mercury as the liquid for barometers. I'm sure you all have understood that and done these calculations correctly. Okay, students. So with those extra questions, I'm going to end this chapter. And in the next chapter, I will discuss few more extra questions with you.